Welcome everyone to the 290th weekly MLP live critique stream. Mm. And I hear Ooh. it's the 21st of September. <laughs> there you go, Allie. Let's get those copyright <laughs> strikes out of the way quickly. The dino's not here. He can't hurt us. <laughs> Dino d isn't real. <laughs> oh, right, right. A wink. Well, as you can hear, we have a small horde of people with us today. Uh, so starting from the top of the list, we got Allie Claw. Hello. Oh, we got Fluffy's Eye. No. No? Or Say hello. hello. Oh. Oh, we got a Len. Hi. And potentially we got a Pixie. They're a little bit busy. It's fine. Hello. I am resetting accounts and passwords. Don't mind me. Okay. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to fire them at our faces. If you have any art, uh, um, you know, print it off on 8.5 by 11, full color. I want it on glossy paper and mailed to our P.O. box. All right, uh, let's do this. Uh, so first picture up, we got one submitted by Soldy. Soldy, you want to mic? Unmute. Hi. All right, you submitted a uh, cute little um, uh, bugle po bugle poem. Yeah. What questions do you got us? Or <laughs> what questions do you have for us on this one? Mainly, like, perspective of, like, the torso, because I think I made it too long. I usually don't do, like, three-quarter profiles with the torso, just usually just with the head. I don't think it's too... I don't think it's too bad, um, but uh, did you do a lot of, sort of, like, construction stuff under this, or, or what? Yeah, the, do the entire body under it. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 the right thing to do. Uh, yeah, I would say the the legs just sort of feel a bit sort of static, especially on the back. Uh, yeah, the way they sort of bend doesn't quite feel natural, and mm -hmm. so sort of moving them apart can help a lot with that as well. Um, just to differentiate the pose a little bit, because even when a character is standing still, they're probably not usually going to be standing in a completely rigid way. It's yeah. it's natural whether you're a human or a pony to to sort of just stand in a more relaxed. Form, even if you're mm. sort of in a formal situation, which considering the attire, they probably are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, they look kind of grumpy about it, so I'm not even sure. Although they seem to be missing they're, eyes, so it's hard to tell. They're embarrassed. Okay. And they do have eyes. Is it just like the eyes are clamped, clamped shut? Yeah. I see. Okay, I, I was sort of seeing it like, <laughs> like if, you had, if you had scowly eyes... I see you draw your eyes and you have like the eyes being scowly like this. Uh like that's how I was seeing it, but just without the rest of the eyes. Uh -huh. Um how I would do sort of the scrunchy eyes is a bit more like let's see. Uh yeah, someone else has sort of done it on the underneath and in, in right of it. Oops, I've lost my pen. There we go. And get bigger. This is sort of like the standard sort of way of Doing like the scrunchy, scrunchy eyes. There are ways you can sort of make it look a little uh, bit more, more realistically founded, but maybe sort of hmm. the nose sort of scrunching up a little bit might also yeah. sort of fit. <laughs> yeah, expressions are fun. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree with having the ears sort of more downturned as well. Can changeling ears move around? Like a, a pre-changeling ears move around? I I'm assu they let's just assume. Let's just assume they can, unless there's actually <laughs> evidence that they can. The rule of cute applies here, I believe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Does that help you out? Yeah. You got any follow-up questions that we haven't answered? You have to look like this. No. You have a little bit of it poking through just to show that there's a hole there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, then. Um, keep it up, bud. Keep keep going. Yeah. Yeah. One more. More buggo horse. Art, art, art. All right. Our next one is by Len. Right? It's, yes. Because Len's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just going to sure. browse right over this that one. one. I remember you. There's his on the brain. You're showing up. Yeah, I remember. I remember them showing us this. Is this the right version, or do you want the one with the different lighting? Oh, this is the right one. The other one oh. is from nine months ago. <laughs> All right. There's still a couple of proportions that I need to figure out, like here and this leg. Otherwise, I don't know if I have much to say on this. Uh, it was a bit more of like a nostalgic post to like compare both of uh, the images. But I, I still want to have a couple of tips on these two. I notice your lighting is inconsistent on how it's being cast. So if if we have a very strong single point of light which this one appears to be right it's just twilight's horn yeah so if we have a a strong single point of light the shadows that it casts are very strong and very pointed um you've done sorry i was just agreeing yes okay um the you've done a pretty good job like on dash's body where we got these large um uh well cell shaded like um shadows but then uh on the things like the wings we could have really pushed the shaping uh, that the light is able to do for us so um an easy way of demonstrating this for yourself uh for reference grab your cell phone it's going to be a single point of very strong light if you turn on its can its light right so you turn on its light and move your hand around it and away from it watch how it casts the the shadow from it uh, from on your hand um, because you can move your fingers around and get some depth playing with the shadow there but you'll see that the shadow is very very sharp and defined um, and every every trail that it casts is very long so you you can carry that through on the things like the wings so the the area right beside the horn you you've done it pretty well where you've tried to cover up uh, it from having a lot of shadow, but in reality, it's still going to have lines of shadow. They're just going to be sharp and short because it's forming on an outward circle from this. So we we would get a uh, some shadows, some dark, um, thin shadows about on the top sides of those feathers that have done up in green, and then you'd also get some on the lee side of the feathers, the the bottom here. Um, and then you would also have things like Pinkie Pie's head that would cast a very strong shadow against this. Uh, and then on the opposite side, we would actually likely take the shadows that you have and stretch them out away from the light source. Um, like they're trying to escape from her. That's just because the light's going to take that shadow and it's because it's such a fine point, it's going to pull it out. It's, it's weird. It's interesting. I hope that makes a bit of sense. Yeah. What's on Fluttershy's hair? Is that just like a band tied up? Uh, They're chopsticks. Okay. They're not in the right position because usually they would be like in an X shape, but I think this looks prettier. (laughs) (laughs) Those wings are fun, though. Yeah, to be honest, when it came to shading, I had already spent almost a week on this. 
so I kind of rushed it when it comes to like the wings because wings are hard to shade a lot of feathers not a lot of fun a lot of details anyways yeah I did my best on the bodies and then I realized like over here there's a bunch of missing shadows and stuff like that but I had spent so much time on it I was just like I want to get it done yeah no of course we totally respect that sometimes you just gotta uh just gonna move on with something. Yeah. I am interested in the eyes. So your the the four characters, um Fluttershy, Rarity, Pinkie Pie, and Rainbow Dash, their eyes all glow. Um Twilight's doesn't. They do, it's just it's hard to, to show because there's already a lot of light uh from the horn. Yeah, fair. Okay. Ooh, if they all glow, it could be fun to have like a bit of Applejacks glowing right underneath the hair. True. I don't know how to do that though. <laughs> yeah, just like a little multi not a multiply. Um color add dodge. glow layer or color dodge. A little sun. But yeah, I feel like the proportions on Rarity and um, Pinkie Pie are kind of off. And I need to learn how to make bulkier horses, because I've tried to make uh, Apple Dash... Apple, oh boy, Apple Jack uh, a little bit bulkier than the others, but I don't know if I did it properly. Yeah, I get that feeling. Like, Apple Jack's chest is a little more barrel, like a real horse. I think um, something to keep in mind for proportions is like where the hips connect. On rarities, hers, her, her butt is very low to the ground here. Um, where if we, oh, sorry. Uh, we're like Pinkie Pie, it connects with the butt being much bigger. So I think um, we're losing a lot of length on rarity just with where the um... hips are connected. So like the body could be longer as well as the hips, like where they connect. So you have more of a butt area. If that makes mm. sense. So, essentially, it would be like uh, her chest would be more up here so that her butt and hips can exist in the same kind of proportion as everyone else so that those very big mm. butt, but the idea. <laughs> And then we'll have the good long leggies getting their full stretch with the body a little more. And you, you can tuck her chest in. That was just a... But yeah. Proportions for those two with the way you've done it up i can't see that um because your style is very dynamic and lanky i mean you can do um sketches of like smaller ponies and i i can still um translate it into my style <laughs> for me it's really easy to to go from one to the other no what i mean is uh, as as like the the viewer, I don't see it as being wrong on yours. Oh, because it seems to sort of fit with the style. Pretty sure that's all, I guess. <laughs> Alright. Then let's uh roll on to our next one. Very awesome stuff, ah. as always. I moved everything away from the desktop. Thanks. R.I.P. Alright, we got this pwn trying to eat an ice cream cone hone. Horn? Hone? I don't know. Uh, not a unicorn. Or maybe they are. Maybe it's actually just completely covered it. 
That would be cold. <laughs> uh, so this is by Scarlet Letter. Uh, this was a Patreon reward, but I think it turned out very cute. If you have any advice, please let me know so I can keep it in mind for next time. Okay. It's very cute, indeed. Missing an ear. I don't, I don't know. We might not see that ear, possibly. Call me, call me crazy. Crazy. Okay. Um, Zom Zom does not like this. <laughs> <laughs> I still think you'd Zom. see a bit of it here, just because of how forward that ear is. Oh, sorry, actually, it'd be way over here, just because the this is like the halfway mark of the head. Their ear is just past that. True. I, I guess the question is: Are they are the ears going sideways or are they going behind the pony? That's fair. Because, um, because like I'm not sure if this is just the ear style. But the this this side of the ear, I don't think would come in so close um to the neck like uh, because essentially the, when ears spin backwards, they're they're spinning, like, gosh, I don't know how to illustrate this. Like little thing. radar dishes. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, so. It depends on what stage and where we would see this part, but usually it's safe to um, have the top part be the connection to the head, where the bottom part will go behind the neck or just fade into the top part, depending on the angle. So that's just one way to do things. All right, shall we move on to our next horse? Yeah, I was just messing with sort of like the drippiness of the ice cream on the face. So if someone else started trying to do the same thing, just sort of having the ice cream like run down the nose and splatter on the face a bit and sort of dripping a bit more off rather than just having like a single sort of like typical sweat drop shape on the face. Makes sense. Uh, I like the, the tongue as well. See, there are also some ways you could do, do sort of do the tongue with this uh sort of pose, but I like that it's sort of like it's like stuck out like, like they're trying to reach the tongue as far out as they can. It's a very, very cute picture. I love the expression. I love the sort of like bendy cheek here. Super nice. It's be cute. Yellow horses need love. <laughs> nice. On to our next horse. This one is bottom left hand corner. It's by Ferret Venom, a little lad who loves carrots and ranch. Critique, please. I'm coming back after a year's hiatus. If this is your journey back after a year's hiatus, dang. I can't wait is to this... see more. <laughs> I was trying. To... At first, my brain is trying to discern like where the tail ends and the carrot thing begins because this doesn't look like something I'd see on a carrot. Uh, at first, then I sort of realized I think it's like a leaf, like a sort of wavy leaf. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It is because I can understand at least that this is meant to be the tail. Because at first, it basically looks like the character's tail is doing this, but then sort of like splitting off into this and then also going down here. And I don't know. That's what the brain says because the green is the same. I understand like it's a color scheme and it's meant to sort of invoke like character imagery, but I would definitely recommend trying to separate this because it bleeds so much here. Like if we don't have the w the wing here, the the uh, or even be especially because the wing's there, it's really hard to discern the separation there. So I would definitely have the carrot just sort of going off like I don't know this way. However, the carrot leaf shape goes, um, just so that it's definitely separate, and mm -hmm. and definitely have, having the wing overlap it is a good idea just to add that sort of like perspective and uh, distance and placement, but uh, but just to get it away from the tail a little bit. 
if you have areas of similar tone or similar color in a picture, you want to separate those or sort of find a way of drawing them to look different. You can mess with sort of hues and values to make things look slightly further apart, but it can be tricky to do. And a lot of the times it's just easier to make sure that they're not anywhere near each other if that's a possibility in the picture, which in this case, it wouldn't be too hard to do. So just uh, sort of thought for next time this sort of thing comes up. Plus, if you think about it on a fundamental level, like a, a vegetable or a leaf, it doesn't really flow the same way hair would. So to have mm -hmm. it more stiffer and rigid, to have it curve not as much coming out of the carrot makes sense in more a realistic yeah. way, which is if you want to go that way. But yeah, mm -hmm. it can be beneficial. It's a very, very proportionately huge leaf to the already proportionately huge carrot. something else you could do for this is i'm not sure if um your base color for your ranch is pure white but if you're painting something white sometimes it's best to go a little less than pure white so you can then like for ranch it's shiny right then you could have white like a white shine on top when it hits the liquid like when light hits liquid you get that really crisp nice like shine line so if if you um because you can pick colors that are like white but not white and trick the eye into thinking it is white especially when you have like a nice dark shadow like you have going on here we could use colors that feel close to white but aren't exactly but then you can like go in and get a different brush really quick that's not what i want but yeah i'll, I'll like you have in these darker sections here where the light is really shiny and nice you could have it you know, on these sections as well to really sell that like liquid shine. But we could get that by, uh, let me see, throw down opacity, make this brush big, please. Sing gray. Then we can get that white shine in. The tech, when I did first see the picture, I thought the the pony was marble before reading the context. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the patterning definitely gives off that impression. I think because it's all like consistently smaller speckles and there aren't any like splotches of, of, sort of more concentrated speckles. It's very even, so I think it gives off that impression. What is right. the liquid supposed to be, by the way? The ranch dressing. Oh, okay. I guess I don't know what that looks like, but I, I can imagine. <laughs> Basically, season dressing with less cheese, more spice. For some reason, I was imagining it was like a sugary thing. <laughs> I mean, there's sugar in ranch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this. I love this wing up here. Um, because yeah, the the way that the feathers are done in this in the original, uh, firstly things like this where like they come, they're just so sort of going at different directions. This is the kind of thing I would do on like a bush, but like not on a a, a wing because the feathers will typically will want to fold into like the same like uniform sort of direction like we've got up here and the way the shading works looks here it very much like separates these layers into three separate layers which like this you, sh you can see the the color the colors of coordinating the different sections but if we look to that as a natural wing it would all be the same color and it would always it would all look like one sort of cape uh, and it's okay to have the pony have different colors on the wings actual birds sometimes do have different colors of wings uh, of feathers but it makes sense to they're not going to be like this this to me basically looks like a sort of three-dimensional shape um i'm wondering if this way i could draw it but it looks like this sort of like um like three different sort of like you got like one sort of shape and there's an opening and then there's like another shape sort of sticking out of it uh and then there's an opening in that and there's a third shape sort of sticking out of that like that's what 
I, I feel like I'm looking at, simply because the shading makes the feathers look very round and cone-like, and the way they're coming out sort of makes it feel like just three like separate wing-shaped things stuck together, as opposed to one sort of coherent uh, body part that has three sections to it. You know, so having the wing, the feathers feel like they're falling a bit flatter would, would definitely work very well. I also love that eye on the left. It's a great. All right, shall we move on to our next one? Or nope, apparently giving me text. There we go. Come on. Yeah, we got a rarity. This is a really cool one. This is different than is what cool. we normally see. So this is by Cyborgan. You might know them from some previous streams and some yes. previous critiques that they have given out to other people, which is great. Some, pre some previous lovely artworks. Mm -hmm. So at first I made a 3D scene to get the right perspective and values. Then I ended up as a 2D, 3D, or then it ended up as a 2D, 3D hybrid. So the rest of their post shows them creating the 3D environment that they use hmm. to generate this image. And then they just paint it over top of their 3D rendering. Fun way of doing that. Yeah, that is, this created a very, very nice uh, effect. It's a very unique looking picture. I love it. Yeah, when I first saw it, I was just like, whoa, is that 3D? Yeah. <laughs> like, it really sells it well. What's that? The the pony in the background, this nemesis of sorts, almost looks like a mummy. I'm not sure what's going on in the story of this picture. It's cool. Yeah, the idea of having like certain things being color, like the lips or like the eyes or something being like the only like having one color, I think would be pretty cool <laughs> as an experiment. You have like the lips and the wine. It's like red. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, it's it's very cool. I love the idea of, of sort of creatively building a scene like that. <laughs> there we go. I don't really have much to say in like sort of critique of it. It's it'll just it looks very cool. Um, I can't think of much that's that I would improve honestly. Um, rarity is floating that glass in air. Um, the little magical, you know, flux sparkly stuff would be a good touch on that one. Don't need to bother yeah. with color, but, you know, just to show that that's her, not, you know, someone off scene. Oh, I think it's right there. Oh! You are right. It's, it, it is weird that there's no... It was a, a little bit of glow around that, not in an actual cartoony way, like we're drawing, but just like a sort of a softer... Uh, if I turn these notes back on, I can do it right now. Um, uh, a softer sort of, hmm. just to sort of show that yeah, there is definitely like a magic thing there, um, and uh, having the uh a bit under the horn would also work because it's kind of weird that it's completely in in shadow. This should also be a light source uh, coming from under the hat. Even if it if it does sort of throw off this lovely shading. Um so uh, yeah, I would definitely have to like rework so have the top of the head there in light rather than in shadow because it's because the horn would be glowing and this there's specifically a thing where the horns themselves don't glow, you just see the magic effect, but I uh obviously that becomes a bit harder to read then. Um, or you could do a thing where if you want to sort of cut it back a bit. Um, uh, so, so we've got the horn like 
like here ish um so have the sort of like just the bit the bits of the lines around it glowing you could try that maybe uh, and just so from under the hat we do oops see just sort of like a bit of a bit of glowiness going on just so we can see oh look there's a there's a horn under there and it's got some some small amount of glowy stuff going on and so we can piece together that magic's happening i don't know that's a it's 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 fun to sort of think about the different ways of visually showing the, the magic of unicorn horns, but there are ways you can do it without uh without destroying the sort of shading you've got there. It's it's all I, I meant. I do really like the the sh the water on the window in the background and then the reflection of the pony. I thought I thought that was like a wooden wall with like sort of a a, tr a, bar a tree trunk bark sort of effect on it. That yeah, that makes a lot more sense in this way. But I don't know. <laughs> You've done a really good job here, buddy. Mm hmm. Also, the clear so just, frustration on this pony's face of cleaning up. Yeah, the, the prince. I, I, I just sort of saw that. That was my brain just sort of finally worked out what was going on with this whole pony. Because I, I, oh, I guess if I'd scrolled over slightly to the right, I would have seen it. But I was, I was kind of like here, um, <laughs> and so I just saw this like weird mop that almost looks like it could be like a sort of Adam's Family thing hand with just like a sort of spade head, because I was only seeing up to here, I didn't realize there was more to the right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all so, it's all so good. It's a good picture. All right. Um, shall we move on to our next one? Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, we also got a submission from Embroidered in Discord. They just Ooh. posted. Yeah, I'll add it in. Uh, because they aren't here, I'll just throw it in at the end. Um, So we got your local candy. Here's uh my two newest OCs, and their cutie marks are still a mystery. These are fun colors. QDs. Yeah, I really do like the colors. Both of them have a fun palette. Especially like the the colors in the hair on the um, on, this, on this one here. Oh, mm -hmm. those hair colors. Though I also like the greens too. They're both great. Great choices. <laughs> the uh, Fluffy's eye. Uh, you wanna? You're really good at doing the, the 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 sort of scruffy look on hair. You wanna help the the tail on that um, stallion? Uh, is this the one in the Butterfly Scottish background? Yeah. Okay, joke. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. So the typically. Like it's 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 all too easy to get wrapped up in the idea of like oh what sort of shape is this character going to have because that is a huge aspect of character design is you know creating shapes that are recognizable for a character but it is important to remember that hair including tails is hair and it flows it's made up of lots of wiggly strands that all go together and they're going to flow in a consistent sort of means so if you're going to style the hair that's totally fine if you want to give them like a wild and flicky sort of style that's fine. But bear in mind how hair is going to flow. You don't have to draw every single strand, of course, but I'm just sort of giving you an example of how sort of flowy hair looks. Um, I've turned down the opacity on this. What am I doing? Um, so if you want to create something towards what you're trying to do, 
you want it to be sort of spiky and cool, right? So first thing, I'll, I'll probably have a few like uh, sort of stray strands over here. You want to create that nice sort of like th uh, the sort of thick um, spokes you got going on. But it's all going to flow towards the same direction, like a, a, a river, I guess. It's all going to end up in the same sort of way. And you just have like extra bits coming off, but it's all still going to and coming from the same source. See, so it would go like under the legs and so come back out and go down. Maybe just sort of push it outwards a little bit. But it's, it's fun to work with mane and tail styles. You just got to remember that it is, it is hair. And as such, it's not going to look. Oh, I don't have very good colors here in this picture. It's not going to look like like this. Um, because, like, what we have here, if I turn this off for a second, um, in your original picture, it basically looks a lot more like there's a long, thin thing going through, and then we have the hair branching out from this, like, middle point. Like this and and so like this obviously isn't like how the hair works because it's all oops turn that back on nope it's all coming from this point going down this way so that's how that's how we're able to sort of understand it um so yeah it's important to create the style that makes sense for the character yes just remember that <laughs> Like this, yeah. All right, shall we roll on to our next horse? Is there anything else about this one? I got nothing. They're cutie patooties. Uh, yeah, beyond the um, ears. <laughs> ears. Any two of them? I <laughs> personally, I, I, well, it's, it's up to you if it's your style. I personally do not like the sort of square shovel muzzles going on i think you know both ponies in the show and real horses too have have sort of rounded snouts so if you want to make them more horse-like that's absolutely fine but if like while this sort of box method is a popular one people use for uh sort of defining the area that the muzzles should like occupy it shouldn't really uh result in the final shape of the muzzle um give them some some stuff to snoots um also, maybe I'll move this eye over just a little bit. Remember that it's sort of, it is a socket on the face and you don't want the ear to be sort of overlapping where the, where the eye is. Um, uh, and the other thing was, oh yeah, actually, bluff. Uh, it, this isn't too bad, but it, the way it's going sort of against the body is a bit off-putting. It's sort of best to have fluff sort of float out. Again, in a similar way to hair, it sort of flows out from the body and sort of back into it um so you don't want it going against the seeding direction you know the, the fur will be sort of growing this way and like hanging down this way so having it sort of go upwards on these bits is uh sort of going in counter to how it would naturally set i think and the final thing is like it, it's it's fun to use uh just sort of like uh, placeholder backgrounds sometimes but i think it's worth drawing them even if even if it's a lot of work and even if you just sort of trace over this at just putting the elements in yourself can make it look a lot nicer I mean, my eye first thing that i look at this image is drawn to this like what is this in the background this looks like it's like a magic thing because this color reminds me of this character's mane so that it's creating like a link here it's like is she magicking something in the background uh no i think it's just there and it's, it, am I mistaken in thinking that this is like Fluttershy's mood board for the, um, when she's making her, uh, enclosure thing? Uh, or is this something related to the characters that you've intentionally blurred into the background? I don't know. Because if, if you drew this out and blurred the background, that's great. In that case, I would just say that, uh, uh, I would either sort of try and create a way of blurring the background incrementally. So this stuff here in the foreground should be sharp along with the characters and as we go further into the background everything should get blurrier which this is a tricky thing to do uh how i used to do it 
and it's not perfect, but it sort of creates the effect is in Clip Studio. I, I, there's probably ways to do it in other programs as well. I would create a selection brush that was very big and like as soft as it can possibly go. And I would just make like a basically an airbrushed selection. And then I would do a, a, a Gaussian blur. And so then it would it sort of create that effect of, of progressively blurring. It, it It's not perfect. It's actually more messing with opacities than it is blur amounts, but it works. Uh, recently, though, I've found a much cooler brush, a uh, brush I downloaded from Clip Studio Assets, which allows for sort of very soft, very careful uh, blurring. It's, it can allow you to just basically manually airbrush on uh, blurring onto the background, and it allows you to do that like progressive blurring. It's really, really cool. So I definitely recommend that because the characters are sharp and focused. So why is the why are the floorboards they're standing on also blurry? You know, um, and I and I would just. Steer clear of elements like this if uh, being in the background if it's not relevant to the to like what's happening if it is relevant if this is like her magic and it's just like this is uh, like the shape of her magic and you've got like a cool pattern thing going on she would have a glow around her horn but if this isn't her and it's just in the background I would just take the color and just just rub it out and get rid of it uh, if you want elements to be in the background they would be like ordinary things like a clock could be here like sort of like a cuckoo clock kind of thing um or something else but just make sure that they're not drawing attention to the characters you want the values of the background to be relatively samey not too high in contrast so that the attention is on the characters basically um so i just that was just a pointer i feel a bit of attention is being stolen by this poster or whatever in the background so that's that's all i mean by that All right, let's move on to our next lovely horse. You do. Okay, we got this little blue one. This one is by Hefnerd. Hefford. Uh, I want to draw a cute horse. No, I want to That's... draw cute horses. Oh, well now you did one, so another, and that'll be multiple. And you'll did it. Yeah. You'll done it. Sorry that the spam filter ate this one. <laughs> I think it was just hungry for a cute horse. I hate that. <laughs> this is indeed a very cute horse. The main sort of like a floaty ethereal type things. We've got these little like splotchy bits um, floating around there. Is it sort of like an energy main? Because that's pretty cool. <laughs> Might be. I'm not sure. It's definitely not just like part of the background because I think it would only be in the circle and not and definitely wouldn't be on top of the body if it was just like a an accidental thing, but. Yeah, it looks it looks interesting. Oh, I like that. I like that drawing going on. Oh yeah, those extra blobbies. That looks really nice. <laughs> extra blobbies. Except, <laughs> except Mr. Blobby. You don't need anything of that. <laughs> Especially not extra. No, no, Mr. Bl Blobby. <laughs> But yeah, you got just, me with um, a it's, it's it's just a fun thing to do when you have a design. It really exaggerate it, really push for it. You don't need yes, to be subtle yeah. with such like a standoutish mane. Exaggeration is a tool, not so much of creating the art, but of discovery. So like when sketching and like trying to learn like poses and anatomy, anatomy and stuff, it's so good to like exaggerate like the proportions or like the the joint angles or the shape just really push everything because you if you know how to go too far you know where the right uh golden spot is and it, it just helps a lot because so many times in art like most people developing will be going like one bit at a time edging forward slowly trying to d very cautiously uh do things better when a lot of the time it's like no just push this crazily in this direction and it's like it, it becomes this thing where it's sort of like too afraid to to go forward um 
Whereas, yeah, if you want to create a thing that has like a certain effect, like just just go wild with that and go too far with it, make it too extreme, and then dial it back, and and you can get some good ideas of how to create the sort of flow and momentum of shapes. And this is a super creative idea of having the sort of blobby energy sort of stuff, the sludge maybe I don't know, um, lava lamp sort of feel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can sort of have a nice, interesting play around with how to make the flowy shapes work. And if you're struggling to figure out how to make the shapes look flowy and how to exaggerate it, just look up references, look up things that might be in like similar styles, uh, even if it's just like abstract art of these sorts of shapes moving together. Could give you some ideas. Really, just those eyes are just so big and adorable. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big fan of uh, horses with teepees, so I like little things. <laughs> yes, I just cool. noticed those. I didn't even see that. All right, shall we move on to our next one? Sure. Yeah. Wait, is, right. oh yeah, we do have one more. Yeah, we do have one more. Just gotta grab it. Whoops. Little itty bitty horse. Up. All right, this one submitted by Embroidered Equations, and uh, they said throwing this in the stream mainly for the perspective and the lighting is just doing whatever without a set source. All right, perspective. What is going on here? I really I like how far you pushed it, like how such an extreme perspective. Yeah. Talking about exaggerations, you know how to do that very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything feels super lovely and dynamic in this picture. Is that a carrot in her hand? That's what I was thinking. At first it looked like a sort of like ponytail. <laughs> yeah, some sort of like pink carrot, maybe like a some other root vegetable. Yeah. Is this like a panda character, by the way? Yeah, it looks like or a red panda. I think. I think. Looks like a, looks like it could be like a regular panda anthro. I'm not sure. I think there's a big tail, though. Like, the big long tail. Oh, I mm -hmm. see that now. I've been trying to discern, like, where everything is in the picture, because, obviously, like, stylistically, there's just, like, a lot of similar colors and values, which I, I understand is intentional. By the way, Vex, you win three points for Gryffindor for your quick response to that user. <laughs> <laughs> Is Vex Gryffindor? No. But it's three points for Gryffindor anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, whether or not it, that they're actually only accolades. I think um, one thing that I'm suffering in this picture is the outlines like smear into the rest of the picture because it's just there's a lot of color changes and your your darks inside of that uh, body is the same as the outlines and it goes from like a dark outline to a lighter outline to a darker outline based on where it is it it becomes kind of hard to see the uh, areas like this band here how does yeah that this is why from i was struggling hair? to this is why i was struggling to make up uh like oh this body parts here this goes there because it because everything does sort of blend together it's hard for the brain to like block everything out in a sort of coherent way yeah yeah so it might be pertinent for you to 
uh, just work with slightly darker outlines or um, try and separate this in a way with uh, differentiated lines. So if your your uh, outlines were, say, a hard brush as opposed to the soft brush that's used for everything else, that would stick out to you. Um, or if you yeah, had to have harsher sure. shadows around it, or even something like uh, a very um, standout color for it. The cyan or something. Yeah. Anyone else got anything to say on this one? No. no. Right. I don't have. Really awesome work. I, I really think you did a great job. You pushed the perspective really nicely. I, I mean, obviously, you'll get better at it the more you do. Um, uh, it is a purple carrot, they said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh because you because you mentioned sort of like the uh perspective and everything yeah i think i think that sort of like the uh what's it called the this perspective where it's like really up close that the that whatever it's called is really good <laughs> um it's uh yeah i mean this this sort of like pose like dynamic posing and composition is is absolute goals so well done <laughs> There is some, I think you could adjust some of the pose, just, just the slightest bit, but I don't think it's something I can accomplish on stream today. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what it is. I feel like I want a little more separation between the body, not necessarily separation, but I think it comes down to, to explain like sometimes. hard to read lines like Zomzom was talking about. The, the yeah. thing that really pushes perspective sometimes is we see where like the sections of the body kind of magnify bit by bit. And I think we lose some of that, especially in like the the body and skirt section. But the hand the hand compared to the foot is like pristine. It's just some tweaking in between. All right. Uh, anyone else have any other questions? Any other art they'd like to submit? Any other ponies they'd like to boop? I left a little sad alley on the bottom, but I <laughs> the art supplies. <laughs> All right. Well, seeing as we got no response, uh, thank you all for coming to this stream and we'll see you again next week. Goodbye. Bye bye.